us to do that. The third thing she believes is that we can actually bring manufacturing jobs back to America. We can. She co-founded, along with a Republican senator from South Carolina, the Senate's Manufacturing Caucus. And they have come up with a whole strategy to repeal all the tax exemptions companies can now get, believe it or not, if they shut a plant down and move it overseas, and instead give communities and companies tax credits to insource manufacturing back to America. We need to make things in America again. We can make things in America again. It can help to bring back the American economy again. And let me just say one other thing about this. Trade plays a role in this, but it's important to understand how this works. Look, nobody wants to shut off all trade. It would bankrupt all the farmers in America, and we got to sell something to somebody else because we're 4% of the world's people and we have 22% of the world's income. The problem is we are right now often at a disadvantage because we don't have labor and environmental standards in all of our agreements, because we don't have anybody in charge of enforcing them, and frankly, because we cannot enforce them. Now, Hillary has a program to change our major trade agreements to improve all that, but as far as I can tell, she's the only person who has made this point that I want to make to you, because this is the only issue that I can find where she is considerably more conservative than President Bush. She believes that we will never be able to fully enforce our trade deficits as long as we keep running these big deficits. And I want to explain why. I want you all to think through. This is one of these connections that you need to make, especially the young people here. Your life is going to be affected by this. You know, we balanced the budget, and I left three surpluses in a row and a fourth surplus budget when I left office. If they had kept, if they had kept that budget, if the Bush administration had kept that budget, the United States would be entirely debt-free and public debt within five or six years for the first time since Andrew Jackson was president in the 1830s. Now. Instead, they went back to trickle-down economics. Ninety percent of the gains of this decade went to the top 10 percent of earners. Half of that to the top 1 percent, big chunk of that to the top one-tenth of 1 percent. Then those of us in that earnings category, they threw tax cuts at us. And what happened? We added $4 trillion to the national debt, imposed a $30,000 birth tax on every child born in Indiana this year and put ourselves in a position where we could enforce our trade laws. This is real important. People don't talk about this enough. So here we are in the university audience, everybody knows. Who's our biggest trade deficit with? China, who's second? Japan, that's right. Anybody know who's third? Korea. And fourth is a rotating combination of oil sellers, okay? Now, you know, because we have this big deficit every day, we have to borrow money to pay for our soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan, to pay for the tax cuts, the subsidies, our basic health and education costs. I couldn't make this up. Who do we borrow money from in order? China, Japan, Korea, and the oil countries. Now you see why we can't enforce our trade laws? Why trade enforcement's only a fifth what it was when I was president? Think about it. Tomorrow morning when you get up, have another cup of coffee and get your courage up. Amble down to the local bank, barge into the bank president's office, and slap the living daylights out of the bank president. You think you could get a loan tomorrow afternoon? I mean, we're laughing, but you get it, don't you? It's funny, but it isn't. We have mortgaged the future of the young people in this audience it was nothing more than greed thinly disguised as a serious economic program. If you don't want to go back to balanced budgets, don't vote for her. She believes we have got to give the young people of this country their future back by getting rid of these deficits and going back and paying as we go. It's very important. Now, let me make a couple of other points about the economy. You need to be prepared for it. And since I'm in a university, I guess I'll be preaching to the saved, but it's important to note that for 20 years, every young American that has at least two years of education after high school has better than a 50% chance of getting a job with a growing income, and every young person who doesn't has less than a 50% chance 
Are there exceptions? Sure. You got a four foot vertical jump, you can play basketball. You can be a rap or hip hop star or an actor or something. You can beat the odds. And yes, there are some people with advanced degrees whose jobs get outsourced. But you've got to play the odds in this life. And the truth is that America has a vested national interest in making sure that every young person gets out of high school, gets at least the two years of education after high school, gets a college degree if they want it, and is able to go on to further higher education if they want to do that. And Hillary's plan will provide for all those things. And I want to explain exactly why. She thinks we have to raise the Pell Grants every year to keep up with inflation. She favors, she favors more than doubling the Hope Scholarship tax credit, which is now $1,650 to $3,500 a student a year. That will help families to pay for the cost of college. She favors a drastic crackdown on abuses in the private student loan industry. They are charging students 16, 18 percent interest a year. It is a scandal. It is wrong. And every school should have access to lower interest loans than that. You know, when, when we were in school, when I, when I met Hillary and we were in law school, we were both flat broke. We would borrowed money to get out of college and work our way through college, and we had to borrow money to get out of law school and work our way through law school. But we could borrow money from the United States government at 2 percent interest. And the idea that these students are being charged an arm and a leg when there are other alternatives that will save them money and actually save the taxpayers money is wrong. We had 10 million more students get college aid when I was president. A lot of them borrowed it direct from the government through the direct loan program or borrowed it from private lenders that had to lower their interest rate to meet the competition. It saved them $9 billion in repayment costs. The average student saved $1,300 on every 10,000 bucks they had to repay. And it saved you, the taxpayers, $4 billion because once the students could repay, they did repay and didn't default. So Hillary's plan is this. Get those interest rates down and give every student the option to pay the loan back as a small percentage of their income over a longer period of time. Now, let me explain that you can do this now by law. She just passed this bill. I, I hate to even admit this because you don't have to vote for her for president to get this. She left the, the campaign trail in November and went back to the Senate and passed her student borrower's bill of rights. But it's really important. All over America, students are thinking, man, I'm not going to make that much money when I get out of school. I just can't borrow $10,000 more. I can't borrow $20,000 more. Maybe I better drop out for a year and, and, and work or do something. And maybe they never go back. This is nuts. A college degree is worth way over a million dollars to a student over a lifetime. And therefore, way over a million dollars to the rest of us. And what this bill means is that nobody but nobody will ever have to drop out of college again because they're afraid they can't afford to borrow another ten or twenty thousand dollars. They can. Everybody can because you can all pay it back as a fixed low percentage of your income over a longer period of time. You will never be bankrupt by your college debt. Therefore, everybody can afford to finish. And it's important. It's a good reason to support her for president. But one last thing. Hillary believes that if you get out of school and you take a public service job that will never make a lot of money, if you decide to become a teacher, a nurse, a police officer, a fireman, your very service should repay your loan. And every year you serve, you knock some loan off. So, now, one last thing about education. She believes that no child left behind has to be largely left behind, that it has to be changed. And I want to explain why. First, it's an unfunded mandate. Already, 80 percent of the schools in America have cut back on history, on economics, on political science, on music, on the arts, already. So nobody can afford to lose their federal money. This law says that we're going to close the achievement gap between American students and German students and kids from Singapore and other things and math, science, and foreign languages by giving them five tests five years in a row and giving the schools money based on how they do on the test. And then it winks at Indiana and said, but don't you all sweat it too much because you can pick the test.